Oh, hi. My name's Irrelevant. Excuse the mess, I wasn't really expecting to be filming today, but something came up and I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to introduce you to a rather rare and eclectic piece of hardware known as the SciQuest Easy Drive. In today's day and age, we take for granted our ability to be connected, to share information or data with anyone anywhere in the world at any time. And heck, if you upload something to the cloud, it's pretty much immortal. Once upon a time, it wasn't so easy. A floppy drive might not have been big enough. Maybe CD drives didn't quite exist yet. And even if they did, they were one way only. The writers weren't out yet. So if you had a fair amount of information that you needed to store for whatever purpose, you had to resort to certain expensive solutions. This is one of them. No idea what this would have cost new, but it probably would have been several hundred dollars, even a grand or more. With a date of 1995, it predates the iOmega zip drive, but functionally in how you use it, it's similar. Internal functionally, it's very different. What you have here is what essentially looks like a hard drive platter sealed inside a plastic enclosure. I would imagine that this thing would be rather fragile. I acquired five discs for this thing brand new and one of them pretty much was DOA. Using it is a, a bit interesting. Uh, you press the eject button, assuming it lets you. Every now and then it's kind of like, uh, what's going on bud? I said eject. This thing is temperamental and you're never really sure what's up with it or what it's thinking. On Windows, it shows up as a removable drive. This is Windows 2000 right now. Uh, we can try going manually eject. Ah, yeah, it liked that. And then flip. We have a mechanical eject. Go ahead and swap that cartridge around. And assuming it doesn't automatically reject the disk right away, In a few seconds, the light goes green and it's ready to use. Do I have anything on this disc? Yeah, a file that says memories. I had been tinkering with this thing beforehand to make sure it would work. When I fired it up for the first time in, oh, probably easily 15 years, it, it, it didn't want to take any of the discs. Maybe there was a little bit of dirt or something on it. I don't know. But after tinkering with it, it seems to be working fine now and it's taking all the discs regularly. Now, as the story goes, I was starting to prepare and research one of my next video projects. It entailed uh, tinkering with uh, a bunch of very old hardware to, uh, well, I'm not going to get into it. Stay tuned if you want to find out what that all is about. However, the problem that I kept running into was that system is so old and my current systems are so new, there was literally no cross-platform media I had available to me to get things that I might have downloaded online like drivers and utilities onto that system. I have some of the original discs but some of the software I was trying to run seemed like it needed more up-to-date drivers and other things well I didn't just didn't have discs for. But I was tinkering with that drive on that system and it worked fine and I know it was going to work fine here. That has SCSI, this has SCSI, that thing's SCSI, in fact, it's big old beefy SCSI with the huge Centronics connector. Look at the size of that cable. That thing looks like it could pipe terabytes a second, but no, it's very old and it's very slow. Now that's slow by today's standards. By its day standards, it was actually rather fast. Because it uses what's essentially a hard drive platter and because it plugs into the SCSI interface, it seems to transfer files about as fast as a hard drive of the day would. Maybe a bit slower because they have to, you know, take it easy because it's going to be fragile. But for the most part, it's definitely faster than a floppy drive. And I think one time when I compared it, it was even faster than a zip drive. The zip drive is a bit more of a simplistic technology compared to it but probably more reliable. So once again, let's see if, oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. No rhyme or reason. This time it accepted an eject while the windows open even. So I'm going to go ahead and put back in this disc labeled not pictures. 
And let's see if it's going to take it this time. It's funny how the light blinks in uh, different speeds to indicate spinning up or spinning down. Now that's funny, because I put a new disc in. Refresh. Okay, yeah, it shows it's gone. I had to go ahead and set up the old uh, dual pre-pro Windows 2000 system here to be an intermediary. It can get onto my NAS network just fine, which means I can access my desktop, and then I can take this folder named Retro and just drag it over. Now let's see that transfer time. This is about 101 megabytes. 45 seconds, eh? Oh, I should be timing it. Snap! Uh-oh. That's not good. See what I mean by temperamental? You never know. This thing's really old. It could just be, it could just be pretty worn out at this point. I'm gonna try remounting it. All right, now let's try this again. This time with the timer. It sounds like it's kind of hunting and seeking a lot, like, like it might be a bit confused. For all intents and purposes, it does sound like a hard drive, just quieter. It's obviously spinning slower because I don't hear a huge amount of motor noise. In fact, with the computer turned off, because it's an external device and has its own power supply, you can barely hear it running. Heck, I didn't even notice I had left it on a couple times. That was like 1 minute and 46 seconds to transfer 101 megabytes. So, let's see what we have here. That's actually impressive for an old SCSI device. If I did my math correctly, that's 57 megabytes a minute. Now. Again, that's slow to today's standards, but back in those days, that was blazing. I'm gonna do that experiment again with a different disc and see if those results stay consistent. Oh, it ejected this time. This one says pictures one. Oh, we got a green light a little bit faster than usual. Oh, the disc in drive D is not formatted. Do you wanna format it now? Yeah, we'll give it a format. Should we give it a quick format or I'm gonna give it a full format. Start from friggin' proper scratch and work our way up. See what a freshly formatted disc is gonna do for us. Gee, it was moving awfully fast and now it's like, been at that bar for a while now. It's starting to do me a concern and the light keeps changing color. It's been eight minutes so far. Eight minutes to format 135 megabytes. Oh yeah, did I mention the capacity size? 135 megabytes. I think this disc was down for a reason. I would have formatted it years ago if it was still good. Okay, well I have a disc that says pictures two on it that I know there's no pictures on. Let's try that one. So we're gonna go ahead and transfer this over again and time it for a second time. The sound from the drive itself is more consistent this time. Ooh, it's making some crazy noises now you probably can't hear. One minute, 37 seconds. Let's confirm size here. 106 megabytes, actually. 65 megabytes a second. Again, consistent results. Okay, well now that we got these files here, let's, uh, let's go put them on the other system. All right, let's see what we got here. We got it all hooked back up now. It's over here, you got a cable going into over here, the interface. Removable drive F, I do believe it is. Yes, there is our folder, retro, now. Let's transfer it over and see how fast it's gonna go. That's weird, oh. This Windows has a separate progress bar for each file. And we're at one minute now. I think there's also a couple games on here. And stop, one minute 34 seconds. That's pretty consistent. And that's going from drive to drive on the same controller. That's pretty good. Well, now that we finally got our files on the system, I guess we can get back to work. Sweet. And I get to finally run the Sheep app again.